Okay, so let's flip the coin and now talk about how entrepreneurs learn to succeed. Before we talked about how they learn not to fail, how do we learn to succeed? Similarly, let's talk about some mental ruts and how we get out of being stuck in a rut. For example, you're stuck on the availability bias. Well, why not combine ideas? Somebody started with something, someone else is conflicting a little bit. Why not, you know, saying, well, oh, maybe we don't want to do that. I'd rather, I don't want to go to that movie. Why don't we go to this concert or this movie or whatever? And so maybe you could talk somehow about going to the movie and going out later, you know, combining different ideas. Um, you're talking about how you could develop your business in a certain way with a certain product. Someone else says, I think we should go after this market. These, these particular people are willing to pay more. Well, maybe there's a way to frame your business and go into both directions or combining those ideas. Or you could extend across the, the concept and markets from one to another. You could be looking at something that is very specific. Like I was just saying before, perhaps you're looking at a company that you're looking at a product that's sold to men, but maybe there's some aspects of it like athletic clothing or whatever that you could reframe and, and start to sell to women. Um, look at analogies. Something worked in one industry. Why doesn't that work here? The way that we do asset sharing with Uber, maybe we could try to apply that in a hotel area and then you get Airbnb, right? So you apply one specific way that you're sharing the asset instead of someone having to purchase the house or stay at a hotel or whatever, you're sharing someone else's when they're out of town. So you could do these kinds of things that try to get you out of availability bias and confirmation bias and those things by just continually to expand and build upon the ideas that, that you have. And that's one way dialogue and interaction with people in a brainstorming kind of a session, uh, two or three people that are that know what they're talking about, that have expertise, but you could bounce ideas from different things, different areas of knowledge, and try to make it, try to move in a new direction. One could think about success in entrepreneurial firms in the context of having different kinds of intelligences, as you would say, they work like skills, different people think in different ways. Uh, research has shown that these five different areas or four different areas bring an entrepreneurial idea to success. This is notion of needing some sort of a, a creative intelligence to identify the idea, a practical intelligence of being able to bring that idea into practice. It's not just pie in the sky, but it starts to be real. And then the analytical sort of process that allows people to come and think about, well, who is the market? How many people might there be? Those kinds of things. The point being that Generally, one person doesn't have all of these kinds of ways of thinking and skills, so it's good to bring a diverse team together, some of whom are good at getting things done and being able to build the product. Other people are good at thinking about the problem from an analytical perspective, and other people can make it look and perform beautifully. Um, Bill Gates, I mean, uh, excuse me, Steve Jobs was well known for having these, this sort of design intuition, this creative intelligence. They bring this entrepreneurial idea together, and Social and emotional intelligence is needed to bring a team so individuals can work with each other effectively and be able to understand how other people are uh, best able to contribute to the final product, and that brings about success. This, uh, this slide tries to make the argument that no, no one person really can be good at all of these things. Some people have certain skills that cover many of these, uh, but uh, in other cases, you generally need people that have multiple skills, and they should not all be the same. They should be different skills come together to form the kind of team that brings about entrepreneurial success. So how does this all come together in terms of thinking about when you have an idea? One way this has been framed, and this is by Barron and Shane, they talk about signal detection theory, which, which simply means trying to figure out whether or not there is really an opportunity there just because somebody thinks there's an opportunity. And so across the bottom, across, I mean, excuse me, the rows here are about somebody saying, I think there's an opportunity. There's a judgment about the presence of an opportunity. There's a, you're looking and deciding whether or not to open a particular type of restaurant, you know, like a, um, a fast food restaurant or something like that, or let's just say, a, a, a Moe's uh, Mexican restaurant, you're trying to decide whether there's an opportunity there. 
I think yes, someone else might think no, whatever, you don't know, right? Because who knows if there's really an opportunity. So there's that judgment, yes or no. Across the top are the columns, and here you say, yes, there was an opportunity. In other words, once everything is said and done, indeed, there was an opportunity to open this, this restaurant in this particular place. Yes, there was. But no, there wasn't. You opened it, and it didn't work out. Happy, were enough people, whatever. How, that, how you think about that problem. The question is, how does one decide where to focus your energy, right? Obviously, what you're looking for here is someone who thinks there's an opportunity and there is an opportunity. You call that a hit. Signal detection would say, you think there's a signal, you identify it, it is there, right? It's, uh, you, 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 there's a signal in the environment and you find it and yes, you've connected and you find an opportunity. In the bottom right-hand corner of this is the correct, re correct rejection, meaning there was no opportunity and nobody thought there was. So that doesn't really count for much because if you don't think one's there, whether it's there or not, you don't ever go for it. So the correct rejection is pretty obvious. The interesting question here is where do you really worry? Do you worry about thinking there's an opportunity, that is the judgment of yes, along the left you know, in the rows, but there's no opportunity, meaning it's a false alarm. You spend a lot of energy trying to build a company, but it turns out there's nothing there to build. There's no real opportunity. That's a false alarm. Or what about all the opportunities that are there, but you don't see them or you miss them? The question is, do entrepreneurs typically worry more? Obviously, they want to hit, right? Do they worry more about working on a false alarm or missing an opportunity? That's entrepreneurs and investors in entrepreneurial firms. Do they worry about a false alarm or a miss more commonly? That's a question to ponder. It turns out that entrepreneurs and investors tend to worry far more about false alarms than misses. And the difference is that entrepreneurs and investors in startup firms realize there are many, 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 many opportunities out there. If there's not an opportunity for the restaurant on this corner, maybe the next corner or the next corner or the next corner or the next corner, there's many opportunities. So missing one or another is not really that big of an issue. However, if you think there's an opportunity there, you spend time, you spend money, you get, develop resources, you spend years of your life and nothing comes of it. You've wasted resources, including your own time and energy plus financial resources and got nothing right? A false alarm is a very bad outcome when you operate on it. A miss, you can always find another opportunity. So what you worry about is false alarm. That means you spend a lot of time in the feasibility analysis stage of a venture. You have your idea, you want to kick it and you want to smash it against the wall. You want to throw it around, figure out all the reasons it could possibly fail. Never forgetting, you want to be optimistic if you believe in it. But you want to make sure that you've found, you've shook, shaken all the bushes and you still see the opportunity there because it's so easy with all these mental tilts to get caught in confirmation bias or to get caught in availability bias or to think through with heuristics about how this is all going to work. Um, you know, it takes six years to get a business work. And so the fact that it's failing doesn't mean we're not going to work, right? It takes, you know, years to get it working. That's a heuristic. Well, it does take years. That is a heuristic. But you see successes along the way. So here, the way to think about this is whenever we develop ideas for businesses and you have one that you think might be right, then you put it through this process and say, OK, I'm going to always along the way be open to the idea that this could be a false alarm. Right. That doesn't mean you give up. It means you, get, you fall down and get up and persevere. But you always realize that you could be wasting time and there's always another opportunity out there and that's a, a one way to be thinking about how to not fail in, in entrepreneurial opportunities so let's ask this question do most successful entrepreneurs worry more about misses or false alarms in fact they worry more about false alarms they're worried that they will waste their time and their energy, and that's oh, that they have a limited supply of. There are many, many opportunities out there.